What's happening, party people? Quick reminder about jointhefoot.com. This is our Patreon community. These are the official Foot Clan members helping power this independent podcast, keeping things running. And what do you get for supporting the show? Well, all kinds of cool perks. We have all these tools on our website that you get access to. The Stream Finder tool is com- – you cannot state the value of this tool when you're looking for – a stream, as they say, the injury podcast that we've been talking about, Foot Clan Game Day Alerts, the Footcast, an extra episode of the Fantasy Footballers every single week. That and so much more. Go check it out. Jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, October 14th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast with another spectacular. wonderful, spectacular episode. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Excited to be with you. We have Buy Sell today. We're doing something fun on the show. We are going to redo the first round or two and uh see see what it looks like we're gonna we're gonna do a little draft ski on the mm. show today it's basically like the top of the draft rest of season rankings sure. is, is essentially what we're gonna have at the end of the, today's show that is accurate mr moore how are you doing today doing very well i'm really looking forward to the draft if i'm being honest and uh we had football last night which was uh tuesday night football.com and we saw the surprising uh, practice is overrated. I mean, I know Allen Iverson taught us that a long time ago, but it was evident last night on the field. You don't need to practice. Zoom is the key. You just hop on a Zoom call mm-hmm. and then go beat an undefeated Bills team by multiple scores. You know, the watching the game, like you, obviously the Titans dominated forty-two mm-hmm. to sixteen, just absolutely trounced the Bills. But it didn't really seem like they dominated the game, uh, as far as like outplaying the turnovers were everything for this game. And obviously that is that is a part of it. I'm not taking anything away from the Titans, but it was like the Bills were able to score on the Titans as easily as the Titans could score on the Bills. They just had some very unfortunate turnovers, a, a popped up, you know, drop that hit a wide receiver in the hands that turns into a, uh, you know, an interception. And, and then next thing you know, the game just completely gets out of control. Things seem a little off offensively with no John Brown, to be honest. And Cole Beasley leaving the field with injury. I didn't feel like Josh Allen could rely on anybody, including Stephon Diggs, in part. He had a couple of drops. Devin Singletary could not get anything going on the ground. No, he could not. And the game fell apart. And the Titans are annoying. They're so annoying. If you commit a turnover, they might as well. This should be a video game power up or power down where you just take five minutes off the clock. Take eight minutes off the clock. You just penalize this. The opportunities that the Bills had, you know, we were in a matchup in a dynasty league. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen goes and throws a dart to to Yeldon. By the way, the one thing I was impressed with on the Bills side, their offensive line is incredible. Some of these plays, Josh Allen is standing there, Brady esque. Yes, nobody's around. Nobody can get to him. He's just standing there waiting uh, to throw a dart someplace. Throws the touchdown to T.J. Yeldon. There is 10 minutes on the clock in the fourth quarter. 10 minutes. Three timeouts. All the timeouts for Buffalo. Mike and I are in a uh, a duel, and we get to the point where Josh Allen just needs another touchdown drive. Mike sends me a message. Things are going to be a little toy. Yeah, I was very concerned. It, with the amount of time left, it was, well, certainly. A couple drives. Certainly Josh Allen will throw at least one more touchdown which would end our matchup never touch the ball again <laughs> <laughs> never even got to have the suspenseful tuesday night football.com moment that we were all looking forward to yes and uh i was defeated. i was not I was looking defeated. forward to it and uh welcome back to the nfl aj brown oh yeah nine targets seven receptions 82 yards and a touchdown on a on a dime from yes. ryan Tannehill. Why don't you Ryan's, bring that uh, tweet up, Mike? Uh, which 
Oh, yeah. I, I want to highlight I'll, I'll those stats because it. it was mind-blowing. But, Jason, yeah, you were Ryan, talking. I was just going to say, Ryan Tannehill has been excellent. He's been excellent since week seven last year when he took over. Um, and, and what Mike is about to bring up is – uh, pretty pretty impressive. So this was a tweet from NFL on CBS, and they wanted to compare how good Ryan Tannehill has been. So they said, well, let's compare him to the current best quarterback in the NFL. That is Patrick Mahomes. They went uh, Ryan Tannehill, 14 starts with Tennessee. So they went the last 14 games of Patrick Mahomes. Same record, 11-3, and three, passing yards. A discrepancy of just 70 yards that Tannehill is under Patrick Mahomes. And I got to show more well, here. Passer rating. And then the, the passer rating is actually slightly higher for Ryan Tannehill. Touchdowns to interception ratio 31 to 6 for Ryan Tannehill, 28 to 6 for Patrick Mahomes. Ryan Tannehill has been unbelievably good for, not, for fantasy football, for the NFL. It just. Yeah, it's I, impressive. I, I saw this stat, and, and I'm looking at where I have Chris Herndon in Dynasty, and it's like, oh man, who's who's next? Who's who is the next person to escape from Adam Gaze? And maybe it's Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, because he has escaped. Yeah, we'll be talking about him momentarily. Joni Smith, five for forty and two touchdowns, including one that I did not expect. That last second, yeah, we're gonna play action pass while we're up a million points. I was shocked. I loved it. Yeah, I and then Derrick Henry, a couple touchdowns in this one. Still doesn't look like the same rushing uh, system without, you know, Taylor Lewan left the game early. Right. And then, uh, obviously, Conklin left, and they don't seem like they can get him ahead of steam as often. It's not cold enough yet. Yeah, I was going to say, wait till winter. Winter is coming, mm -hmm. as they say. <laughs> For Derrick Yeti? Yes. Uh, okay, let's, um, let's do some buy-sell, then we'll get into the news. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week we had a, a battle, and we were all two for three. Mm. Deshaun Watson is a top eight quarterback. I bought it. You guys both sold it. He ended up as the quarterback six. He snuck in. Kareem Hunt as a top eight running back. I bought it. You guys both sold it. He ended up at 12. And then Allen Robinson is a top eight wide receiver. We all sold that, and he ended up as the wide receiver 22. So this week, the week six edition of Buy Sell, Jonathan Taylor taking on Cincinnati. And the Buy Sell line that Brooks has put in here, 100 total yards, which he accomplished in week two. But the last three weeks, just 62, 79, 74 yards. He's getting 15 opportunities. That's the average in those weeks. I'm actually going to sell this. Mm. Uh, for whatever reason, Jonathan Taylor has not impressed me. He has not been given uh, enough opportunity to kind of get going, I think, or have an opportunity to impress me. I haven't seen a special thing on the ground, so I'm going to sell it, and I'm disappointed in having to do that. I am going to buy this. At first, I thought that the line was 100 rushing yards. He's only done that once on the season. Th this could be a matchup where he could get 100 rushing yards but it's total yards, so I'm 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 going to buy that he crosses the century mark. Do we, how many times has he passed 100 yards? That's probably that one it's, time. Yeah, it's still just that one. <laughs> yeah, those yardage totals are his total yards yeah. in those games. Uh, I'm with Andy. It has been very disappointing to see the results so far from Jonathan Taylor. Uh, I still believe in the player, but he's not breaking tackles the way that I – Thought he would be able to, and he's just he's not getting the workload that we had expected because, of course, when Wilkins is on your team, you know, uh, third string running back who just he's just hanging around. Look, if it's Dominique Wilkins, I get it, okay? <laughs> but Jordan, dunk on them fools. Yeah, I mean, you, you bring him in for Wilkins a, reference. That's right, Mike. You bring him in for a windmill <laughs> or something. But Jordan Wilkins, no. Why is Jordan Wilkins getting carries? Because they don't want to. They love field goals. They love Blankenship. I think they. Oh man, rocket, rocket ship. ship. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean the the reality is they're they're holding Jonathan Taylor back. I think on purpose. And and at when we get towards the end of the year uh, and towards the playoffs, you're going to see him explode. Do we have another Yeti? I will say this: Jonathan Taylor's schedule lightens up against the for for the rushing purposes. 
over the back half of the year. We've got uh, some good matchups. We'll see what happens. Terry McLaurin. Well, versus- anyway, but I am selling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Terry McLaurin versus the Giants as a top 15 wide Man. receiver this week. Um, nope. I'm selling that. Yeah, top 15 is is tough. James Bradbury uh, on, on over on the Giants has been shutting people down. Uh, he's been playing very well. He is the second or second highest graded cornerback in coverage according to Pro Football Focus. And the uh, the and Redskins quarterbacks I, have been shutting people the down Washington, too. Washington, that's right. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Um, and, so it let me let me buy sell over here, people. Sure. Uh, I I got to sell. Uh, unfortunately, that combined with the. The, the just the unknown nature of we still don't know what Kyle Allen will be with uh, with Terry McLaurin. Kyle Allen will be the starting quarterback for Washington. He was cleared, so they they're going to go back to him. But I unfortunately I have to sell top fifteen. Yeah, I, I'm I'm selling as well. I I think there's too much unknown right now in Washington. Uh, their offensive line looked terrible last week, which won't give a lot of time to whoever is playing quarterback. So I, I I'm you know obviously he can do it. He's done it two yeah. out of his five games, but I'm going to sell this week. I'm going to change the line. Top 20 wide receiver, not top 15. That's does, much... it change, does it change any of our buy sells? I am willing to buy at okay. top 20. Let's change it to top 20. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still sell it. Oh, I see what you've done. I think I've got to buy. I mean, I was, I was kind of on the line at 15. Top 20, he's got the talent. I, I know Bradbury's there, but sure, I'll buy. Okay, all right. Kirk Cousins against Atlanta, 270 passing yards. He's not hit that number at all in 2020. Atlanta's allowing 345 a game, though, and you have Dalvin Cook, who likely will miss this game. 270 for Cousins. Ah, That's a good line, Brooks. I don't (laughs) like it. I don't think he'll do it. No, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to buy it, man. The Atlanta Falcons are a troche couture, and I'm going to buy it. Is that a real word? It's a playoff of uh, Feroz Couture, which is a playoff of other things. Look, this okay. that reference is at least six layers deep. And you went atroche, like an atrocious defense. Absolutely. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I know he hasn't gotten there yet this year, but he's basically thrown for 250 or more yards in all but one game. It's so close. This is the Falcons. I'm going to buy. All right, yeah. I have Cousins as my stream of the week, and I think he gets it done. Uh, Sell. With touchdown. There you go. With touchdowns. But uh, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Freedom! Oh, Is there? A, that's a very ominous bell. Is there also a joyful bell? I think this should be an ominous bell. This is a terrible, terrible thing that has happened. Because Lev Bell is about to ruin someone's running back core. It, it, it's going to happen. I mean, look, <laughs> I I made a trade offer last night of trying to trying to capitalize on King and Drake's touchdown, just out of fear that you know, oh, he's struggling. You know, the Cardinals running back coach was the former uh, Pittsburgh Steelers running back coach, and what if he signs? Like it, it's just one example of like if Lev Bell signed in Arizona, King and Drake is. Just over. Just if, completely. If Lev done. Bell signs in Arizona, he's going to be bad. Sure, but my point is, wherever he signs, he could just flat ruin yes, you somebody. Are, you are correct. Yeah, he should have uh, been released a little earlier. Might have ended up in New York. The yeah, that the flexibility been. of Le'Veon Bell in an offense. He's going to be added to a roster. Jason's absolutely right, and it will be better for Lev Bell wherever he goes because it's been atrocious. Whatever you said, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I this is this is unbelievable. I mean the Jets are almost like uh what is happening? It's like a sitcom or something that you don't they're not in on the joke and everyone else is. It it I the 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 rumors started filtering out yesterday or the day before of the Jets are trying to trade Le'Veon Bell and it was man who who's possibly going to take on that contract? They're going to have to work something out where the Jets are willing to pay a lot of the contract. I mean, a lot of the same arguments we had when we were talking about David Johnson, even though the Cardinals were able to trade David Johnson for uh, possibly the best wide receiver in football. But this is 
just absurd. The dysfunction that is happening with the New York Jets that they just cut Le'Veon Bell. And it's it's so bizarre because Bell Bell got what he wanted. <laughs> like there's obviously there was stuff going on behind the scenes that we do not see. Arguments between him and Adam Gase. There's there there has been the whispers of uh uh personality conflict since the signing happened, you know, right after it happened, the it got leaked out. Adam Gase did not want this to happen. And he finally released Levy about Lev Bell, Bell gets what he wants. He gets his money and now he gets to go play for somebody else who has more than zero wins. So let's make some predictions on Le'Veon Bell's potential destinations. I've got four teams. Man. I got right. four teams and okay. I, that I think are interesting. And I'm looking at a team that is maybe uh, on the bubble of competition and could need help there, could need depth. Okay. Believe it or not, at the top of my list is Tampa Bay. Oh, I, they're on my list for I sure. I know that they've done McCoy and they've done Fournette, and, but – Ronald Jones can't catch the ball, and and uh, Keyshawn Vaughn's a rookie, and and when it comes to trust in this window yes. that they have, Tampa Bay's at the top of the list. The, yep. the fact that they went after LaShawn McCoy and then grabbed Leonard Fournette, they're searching for Lev Bell. I don't know if they can afford him now with all the running backs on the roster. The Mount Rushmore of washed running backs, potentially. Um, let me give you another uh, a team that's winning games, but their offense hasn't looked good, and they lost a running back. Chicago Bears. Okay. With their pass catching running back going down, they could use some offensive weapons and they're in the hunt. That is a that's a, a great point. Yeah, absolutely. People have whispered about New England. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the go to for any type I don't of think players that's available. A fit, though. I really don't because I with what James White brings to the offense, right. I don't think you need to bring in um that personality. I uh, will bring up two others. I, Philadelphia okay. and Las Vegas. Okay. Those would be two Las Vegas because they just want all Hashtag the pass Raiders. I they mean, want it's all just, the pass catchers. It's just something they're competing right now, and it seems like okay, this is something they could logically say puts us over the hump, even though it it's stupid. The what we don't know about Le Lev is what what's he going to be looking for in a contract? Because he's like the Jets owe him money. They they still owe him guaranteed money. My dark horse here is one uh, because we don't know the status of Nick Chubb. Like there was the whispers that this injury that Chubb had while he's on the IR, this might be like a six to eight week injury for, for Nick Chubb. I think the Cleveland Browns are a dark horse in this race for Lev Bell. Interesting. Interesting. There was some news this morning uh, from Doug Peterson when asked about Lev Bell, because I guess some other people threw them into the mix. He says, I'm extremely comfortable with the guys we have. I think we found our three down guy in miles. Hmm. So Miles Sanders managers can, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there was some other news this morning, running back related. Uh, yep. Yeah, like not going to hit the bell for this. But yep. Melvin Gordon charged with DUI late Tuesday night. Yeah, they have the Patriots this week and uh, potentially, you know, a serious situation for Gordon in terms of discipline. He was also going uh, what is – Registered as twenty five to thirty nine miles over the speed limit. I don't know the the laws in Denver. I can only speak to Arizona, but here that would count as criminal speeding, so that would be two very large strikes. And for fantasy football, like moving aside from the what he did, for fantasy football, uh, we don't know if Melvin Gordon will be playing. If he is out this week, it will be a team decision. The NFL, the league generally waits on these situations for the all the legalities to play out and then a player receives a suspension. All right, but that uh you know Lindsay has been brought up in a couple times as a cursory ad for you, yes, he waiver needs, purposes. He needs to be added now. If he's just if he made it through your waiver run, yeah. he should be picked up immediately. All right, uh Kyle Allen medically cleared, he will start in week 6. So that is the the hope for McLaurin and Gibson and company. Yep. And a reminder, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Check who uh, your opponents have dropped in your fantasy league after waivers ran. Some people have had waivers running tomorrow on certain platforms. So it's kind of a message for both days. All right. Before we get into our uh, brand new fantasy draft redo, we want to thank today's sponsors, 
Football fans, are you an Amazon Prime member? Yep. Did you know, Mike, that you can watch NFL football live on Prime Video? I knew. I knew that, but I'm happy to share the news with the Foot Clan right now. Uh, it is the future of football, Mike. You can catch all the action on any device almost anywhere in the world. You can choose your favorite announcer. That's a cool feature. You get those next-gen stats. Mike, you're familiar with those. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. And uh, they're powered by AWS, by the way. No more waiting around. You can They've access. Got proof. They got proof. You can access the current stats anytime. If you want to check out your fantasy players doing, this is the ideal way to stay up to speed. I've been watching a lot more on mobile devices. Yeah, you know, me too. It lets me, uh, you know, I go out back and I got to build a grill the other day. And right. it's like I can watch the whole game and build a grill at the same time. Catch the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills this Monday. Kickoff is 5 p.m. Eastern on Prime Video. It's also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. And it's presented by Bud Light Platinum. And we want to thank Simply Safe. Uh, they've been keeping our studio and homes safe for a long time. Every 26 <laughs> seconds, there's a break in in this country. But with Simply Safe Home Security, you can protect your whole home around the clock. It's serious, lasting protection, takes very little time to set up. Uh, they, their award winning arsenal of sensors and security cameras, they, they can blanket every inch of your home. And you can know that you and your family are always safe. They can monitor your home around the clock with security professionals that are there in case of an emergency to call uh, and immediately send help to your home. They really are a, a, a great modern company. It's no wonder the U.S. and World Reports named Simply Safe the best overall home security of 2020. And right now, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers and get a free security camera plus a 60-day risk-free trial with any new system order. There's nothing to lose. Go today to simplysafe.com slash footballers. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Redo. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Thank you for the gotta, edit. Got to spice it up. All right. Uh, we are going to take a look. You know, we're five weeks into the season. We're going to take a look at the first round, maybe the second round as well, and just see how things would be different today. Like Jason said, it's kind of a rest of season rankings. If you look at, uh, if you want a refresher, <clears throat> Christian McCaffrey went one on one. This is uh, how things played out uh, to begin the year. Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs. Alvin Kamara went 10th. Uh, Devontae Adams in the first round, and then Austin Eckler. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, there's one player here. That I'm really curious. We're gonna go in order. Take you know, basically each of one of us drafting. Now we're not drafting teams. We're just drafting the next best player. Mm -hmm. If we were up, um, but there's one player I'm really curious where he, where he's gonna go, and uh, we'll we'll see that that pretty early. Who is starting? Who's got first pick? Andy drew the first pick. It will go Andy, Mike, Jason. All right. All right. Uh, if not for the injury that recently occurred, this would be a more difficult decision. Uh, Alvin Kamara is the pick. I'm going to take him the 101. Okay. Interesting. Um, Zeke, Aaron Jones, Cook, Kamara, all in contention for the 101 right here. I will go with Kamara. I know Michael Thomas has missed time that might inflate a little bit of what Kamara's done, but this is this is Alvin Kamara. This is a top three type of player. He's great. I was I was curious if the bye week would factor into your decision because you're <laughs> the pick you just took will not be playing for. That team, yeah, <laughs> in no, this it's, first week, it's true. Uh, but I will go with Kamara. I think it's the most guaranteed combination of both production and upside in a player right now. Um, and again, it would it would depend a little bit on what you're looking for if you're drafting fresh. But to me, that is a you're just locked and loaded with Alvin Kamara. You can't run the Saints offense without him. Right. Uh, I would love to take Dalvin Cook here, uh, but the fact that he's going to miss a game, it's interesting how. <laughs> I'm taking this really seriously. I'm trying to break down. I'm like, good. If I took a guy right now, I would have to pass on Dalvin Cook because I don't. I'm not buying into Mike Zimmer. It is ooh, Dalvin Cook might stop, stop. Dalvin Cook. I don't think he plays this week. I know for sure he's not playing in two weeks because you have the bye week. So that comes down to to Ezekiel Elliott or Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is past the bye week, so you would have him, or you should have him. You know every single week now through the remainder of the season. 
Oh man, I'm gonna. I would, if I was picking, I would probably take Zeke. So, I think that's a great pick. It, it's just it. I feels like I'm taking the safety of Zeke versus the. Uh, you are the up. <laughs> I, I know. I'm just that's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself okay. of, of the upside of Aaron Jones. I feel like I'm doubting Aaron Jones yet again. The reason we're all in the mess of not having Aaron Jones on our teams, I'm doing it again. Well, look, I'm on the clock. I can rectify that by taking Aaron Jones, which I'm going to do. But the player that I would be considering here, um, other than Aaron Jones, has actually not been brought up uh, yet, which is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry has also passed his bye. Winter is coming. It he's, is. You know, he, he should be in consideration at, at the very top of these drafts. But I will take Aaron Jones. His uh, receiving work means he's game script proof, and he's just been outstanding. Okay. So we've got Kamara, Zeke, who has an Andy Dalton situation now, where I think he'll be the focal point, but I'm not really upgrading or downgrading Zeke. I think efficiency, right. goal line opportunities could suffer if the offense doesn't move as well. I mean – we can give Andy Dalton credit, but not enough credit to say that they're a better offense with him than they would be with Dak. Mm -hmm. Aaron Jones at the uh, at the three spot. Okay. So uh, in consideration here, by the way, I, why don't I just share this? Because this is always interesting uh, at various points of the year. Right now, the top five quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Dak, and Kyler Murray. Right now, the top five running backs in fantasy points. This is points per game with four games played, by the way. Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, and Chris Carson. Top five wide receivers right now, Adam Thielen, DK Metcalf, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, and Tyreek Hill. And then the top five tight ends right now. Is this true, jo Joni Smith? Points per two, game? Two touchdowns. Yes, sir. Last Interesting. night. Uh, so Joni Smith is the number one in points per game with he, four games played. It's, it just like, it's just like Derrick Henry, where Jason was bringing it up. Like, we... You know, yes, pun intended. We have forgot the Titans. Of uh, hmm. they've been gone for so long that it faded out what Janu did in those first three weeks. Travis Kelsey's at two then, and then Robert Tanyan, Mark Andrews, and Noah Fanton Waller at the five spot. So um, five weeks in, that's where it stands. This pick, uh, it's going to be another running back. Jason brought up Derrick Henry. Other considerations here would be somebody like Chris Carson, who's been super impressive. Yes, Carson's great. Um, it could be Kareem Hunt, based on it could. Uh, how you look at the rest of the season for Nick Chubb. Not when Lev Bell takes all his carries. And, I, and Josh Jacobs, too. Yeah, and I just want to bring up the, the name now that I was curious where he was going to fall. Mm -hmm. Christian McCaffrey. At what point, yeah. if this was actually a startup draft today, yep. do you take the guy who was phenomenal week one and week two and now you see Mike Davis owning so when when CMC gets back he's going to scorch the earth you hope I mean unless that high ankle sprain slows him down on his return so I'm, I'm just curious won't. where yeah. he'll slide in here yeah he'll slide in right here Christian, oh, really? Christian McCaffrey will be the pick um I don't know how long I mean Kareem Hunt right now has has been incredible and that is with multiple games of Nick Chubb he would be in, like if you told me Nick Chubb's out for the next eight games I would I would probably go Kareem Hunt here with the question marks of CMC, but I will go Christian McCaffrey. I think this is the right place for him. I mean, Alvin Kamara's on by. Dalvin Cook's going to miss a game or two. Christian McCaffrey might miss another game, might miss two. But look at what Mike Davis has done. Look what this offense has been able to do with Matt Rule. And look at who Christian McCaffrey is. So I'll take him at four. Uh, that leaves a very difficult decision here. For It would be between Kareem Hunt here and Chris Carson. I, Man, I... No, not as much consideration for Henry or Jacobs. Uh, I get man uh, Jacobs. No, he's just it's been too hot and cold for me. Uh, Derrick Henry prop probably and winter is coming. He's seems like he is a very let me, safe let me throw situation. some other names out there just so that they're in our brains. Okay, okay. great. Um, let's go. Miles Sanders is another name that yes. is worth bringing up. Clyde Edwards Alaire is another name. He went four in the. Uh, in most drafts, mm -hmm. I would ADP. throw Devonte Adams uh, out there past his by. Should be fully healthy now. That's a great point. Uh, and DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, absolutely, Hopkins yeah. and Michael Thomas. I mean, those. You know, the where do the wide receivers fall in? Okay, so Mike's on the clock. I'm so glad for that. <laughs> yeah, this does seem like one of the more difficult spots so far. Uh, I will take. I'm going to take the Yeti. I'll take Derrick Henry. It's uh, super safe over here. Is what they call my team 
Oh, yeah, which is something you take such great pride in I, as a fantasy football yes, player. Yes, I know. Mike playing safe. I, Embrace the variance. I am really sad because that Minimize would, the variance. If you took anyone else, I had an easy layup of Derrick Henry. So, uh, good pick. Thank um, you. Thank now, you. I'm I'm stuck here with, you know, uh, all the all the options we've been talking about. I am going to pull the trigger on a riskier pick. I'm uh, probably not going to have him for two weeks, but like the Christian McCaffrey pick, you want the most talented player who can go out there and score so many points in one roster spot, and that's Dalvin Cook. Yeah. So I'll yeah. I'll take him here, uh, not let him slide any further. And uh, that'll give me a layup as well because it was a player I was considering at the fourth pick. I will take uh, Kareem Hunt here with the seventh pick. Mm. Love the passing game involvement. He's just a dominant force for fantasy football. We are still very, very robust RB here. Yeah. And, uh, man, I, I've i been trying to run it through my brain, the, the experiment here on these wide receivers. DK Metcalf, where are you guys on the sustainability of what he is? I know he's the number two guy so far, but what, are, what, what percentage chance do you give DK to end up Top three at the end of the year. Top three? Yeah. I give him a higher chance than Calvin Ridley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I, I do that's... not think he will be there, though. Let me just say, put that on record. I don't think he will be top three. He is still a player. If you look at his entire game log, I believe he has four receptions on average per game. I think he's done four for four out of the five games he's played. Now, if he connects on that big play, which is the highest probability with Russell Wilson to do so, that's great, but he will have a game or two, maybe more, where that touchdown doesn't come through and you are less than because of it compared to a player like, you know, PPR value of an Adams or a Hopkins or a Thomas. So I don't think he ends up in the top three. All right. That's but. fair. Uh, it, he won't be playing for my team right away, but I'm going to take Chris Carson right here. Interesting. Wow. So you're sticking with the running back position. Yeah, it. It's funny, man. I you just it's so hard to get away with it because the value it, when these guys are when they're getting the workload, they are such an advantage to the team. It but they're all getting hurt. I think that's the most surprising pick. Yeah, that that surprises I me. Love Chris Carson so much. I, I honestly, but I over was, Miles Sanders. Yeah, over Clyde edwards alaire Yep, interesting. At this, at this point, I would take Carson over them. I mean, I, I had my speech already prepared for how Chris Carson is always disrespected. <laughs> but now I can't use it because this is a lot of respect given to him. This is, you know, this is where he deserves to be based on, or you could argue even higher based on what he's done so far this season. Um, all right, Chris Carson, I, I feel like at this point I'm looking at these Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Miles Sanders question marks, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the first wide receiver at this point. Um, in consideration, uh, obviously, uh, you, you brought up DK Metcalf. Um, Adam Thielen's the current number one wide receiver. He wouldn't really be in consideration for me here. Really? Not not really, no. Ho I, Hopkins is sitting at four overall right now. To me, it's between three players, Michael Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, and Devontae Adams. Two of them are injured. Hopkins has been amazing. But if I were on the clock, I would – genuinely take Devonte Adams out of those three first he's passed his by yeah. they they used the, the time wisely to give him full health he was absolutely dominant when we saw him last and I trust the Green Bay Packers offense more than the Arizona Cardinals offense right now so That's I'm fair. I'm gonna go with Hopkins here or uh with uh Devonte Adams as the first wide receiver yeah it would have been a weird setup to pick Hopkins <laughs> yeah uh, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with another running back. I'm gonna go Clyde edwards alaire here at the tenth right. overall pick. Over Miles. Yep, over Miles. Ugh. Over Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You 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 could you could change it. We don't have harsh strict rules here. I'll take Clyde. You take Clyde over Jacobs. Yep. All right. So so that theoretically puts us at like towards the back of the first round. And he uh, he has been the and uh, John who has been absolutely incredible here, but the difference maker on a weekly basis has been Travis Kelsey, and I 
building out the roster here on the turn, I would take Travis Kelsey because I know that one of these running backs or wide receivers is going to make it back to me. So I would take Travis Kelsey right here at 11. Whew. This is creeping up, but obviously the only thing he's done to deserve that is be the number one tight end yeah. for four straight years and uh, dominate so far. Well, this it's year. like look look at the landscape. Like Janu, it's possible that Janu can can keep it up. You know, this is this was, doubtful at this level. Yeah, d doubtful. But this was you know this is his, this was his chance, his first real opportunity without Delaney Walker. The the Ryan Ryan. Uh, we just pointed out how well Tannehill is playing. And then the other guys, you know, Robert Tanya is not going to be here at the end of the year. Mark Andrews has, is hot and cold. Lamar Jackson is very hot and cold right now. And Waller is not Travis Kelsey. I lo we love the, we love the Wallerists. Yeah. And so I'm going, I'm going with Travis Kelsey. All right. Uh, that puts me on the clock here. And I'm, I'm basically in the same exact boat I was the last time I was around looking at Josh Jacobs, looking at Miles Sanders, looking at you know some some really good running backs, but they're a, a tier down. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take Hopkins. Uh, I was you know between Devonte Adams, Hopkins, and Michael Thomas, so I'm gonna stick with my wide receivers and take DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, yeah, I was between Jacobs or Hopkins for me with this next pick, and you made it easy, so I'll take Josh Jacobs with the 13th pick. Well, then I will take Miles Sanders. And I'm back on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it, baby. Yeah, all right. So uh, with Miles Sanders and uh, Josh Jacobs taken, if I'm looking at the running back position. Yeah, who's uh, left? Well, you've got Jonathan Taylor, who has been disappointing, but so has Clyde Edwards-Alaire. The volume is there, and I do expect it to grow as you go on and then i and then i think that there's another tier break and you've got names like uh James Connor um and no. uh, yeah i mean <laughs> i get it so this goes back to my wide receivers i was between about, three of them i mean oh. Joe Mixon's still on the clock you also have the Metcalf Lockett combination that hasn't been talked about Thielen Ridley yep yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of great players still but i'll take Michael Thomas uh, he sh should be back soon, healthy. He was the number one wide receiver drafted uh, early in the season for a reason. And so Michael Thomas will complete my wide receiver trio. Okay, so I am back on the clock here. Jacob Sanders, Thomas, the last three picks. Trying to d decide what respect Metcalf, Lockett, Thielen deserve here compared to the running back position. Um, and I think I will go with Joe Mixon here at the 16 yes, overall. Pick. It's fair. Uh, so, fellas, I've, I've flipped over to our uh, our snapshot tool on the website and the fantasyfootballers.com because, you know, points per game, like overall rank right now, it, it things are a little bit skewed. I want to see points per game, and there's some very interesting results here at the top. Uh do you know who the, the number three wide receiver in points per game is? Is it Mike Evans? It's Jameson Crowder. <laughs> <laughs> well, then easy pick, Mike. You're on the clock. I mean, Jameson let's go. Crowder. He's he's only played three games compared to everybody else, but <laughs> it it just tickles me to see that Jameson is funny. Crowder up there. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, and that it, you know, Adam Gase has accomplished <laughs> his goals. Oh, so funny. Imagine how good Crowder could be without Adam Gaze. Well, we 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 got to see that he wasn't really good. This is he's the one player where he's it goes opposite. I mean, he was in Washington for years where we kept calling him as a breakout, and it never happened. That's fair. Um, I would, man, I'm looking at the wide receiver position. I mean, Tyreek Hill has been great and yeah. far more consistent than he has been in a long time. But like part of the variance for Edwards Alaire is the fact that Tyreek Hill has been scoring. I don't know if it's every single week, but it's the the vast majority of them. That could go away and change. All but one week, yeah. That could change over to Clyde in an instant. I I am bought in, man. I I am bought in on DK Metcalf. So uh, it's between DK and Adam Thielen here. I'm bought in, man. I'm taking DK Metcalf. This is a wild world. I live. I'm taking Seahawks all over the place. Now we are not building one team. We're just drafting who we yeah. think is the best player available right there. And, and Metcalf, yeah, it's been four receptions, but it's over 90 yards every single week. 
and the the cooking is continuing. I saw a uh, a tweet. I uh, forget who it was, but it took took a look at the same amount of games played for Lockett and for Metcalf, and their numbers were unbelievably similar. I mean, right. they're just both dominating more, more, far more receptions for Lockett than for Metcalf. But the yardage, I think Metcalf actually had like twenty more yards, tons of touchdowns for both guys. I love it. I and and I love that y you took him, and I was decided. I was like. If I'm here and I'm deciding between Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, would I, you take Tyler Lockett over Tyreek Hill? No, 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 no. I wouldn't. Okay. Uh, Tyreek Hill is my pick here. Okay. Um, but if I was staring, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have taken DK Metcalf over Tyreek Hill either. But I'm just talking about the 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 DK Metcalf versus Tyler Lockett right decision. That's a really really hard one to take because I think uh, you know obviously you've got more total volume usually with Tyler Lockett more receptions more half PPR full PPR points there but then you've got just monstrous upside with DK Metcalf and I didn't want to have to make the decision so thank you well, I made um, it for but you. I will take Tyree Kill here okay yeah for what it's worth uh you know top quarterbacks right now that you could be thinking about uh you know again taking a quarterback early is all about can you guarantee production but Russ and Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen have been delivering each and every week but it's not my pick. I'm going to go with Adam Thielen here. Yeah, I'm right. We're going to make it three wide receivers in a row. I don't have confidence in Matt Ryan right now moving forward. And that is um, that makes it difficult with Calvin Ridley. Obviously, a, a hyper-talented player has delivered for fantasy players this year. But it's a confidence issue. So, I like Adam Thielen. So, uh, a name that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we – hopefully we don't have any <clears throat> nasty omissions from this list since it's off the well, cuff. It, yeah, it, it's it's tough, man. Uh, but in points per game, he's been fantastic, but he's also missed a couple games. It, that's Raheem Mostert, uh, running back for San Francisco. He has been in the top, uh, top 24 each of his three games. I don't know that I would draft him here, but it's, he felt like a name that – should be mentioned of if we're if we're going to forget about any of these Todd, yeah, Gurley, backs. Todd Gurley, names, James Robinson, yeah, uh, Julio Jones. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's names here just, that are. Yep. What do you do? With? Yeah, I'm so concerned about Julio Jones. Jay, what, you were the one who was leading the charge of being concerned. I guess we don't have a ton of new information, but where where is your confidence level lying right now? Um, after, after some time, I, you know, I, I, I fear that Dan, you know, now, now that Dan Quinn is gone, I think they can do the right thing and let Julio rest, which is great news. I think you're, you're hopefully going to miss Julio for a little while and then get him back strong the rest of the season. All right, Mike, you are on the clock. This is a, this is a tough call here. A few picks left here in the second round. Oh man. Uh, I'm going to take Calvin Ridley right here. Okay. Hmm. Uh, right. I believe in Calvin Ridley long term as well, and I'm I'm nervous about Julio. I am between Jonathan Taylor and Tyler Lockett. Ooh, yeah. I love both of those players. I thought I was going to take Jonathan Taylor, but once I said the names out loud, I I would take Tyler Lockett. He's he's been great. I I assume he will continue to be great. And while I think Jonathan Taylor will get going as uh, the season nears the playoffs. We, we haven't seen it yet, and we've seen right. it with Lockett. So I will take Tyler Lockett. So a lot of wide receivers going right now. Now, I, I have a wide receiver I'd like to take, but I think the right pick is uh, I think the right pick is Jonathan Taylor. So I need one of you guys to promise me you're going to take, uh, take Stephon Diggs with the last two picks. Otherwise, I can't make it. <sighs> Dude, that's on brand. And you, you got it for me? I if, got if it If Mike for doesn't you. take him, you, you're going to take him? If Goggles McBlanket ship <laughs> is not on the <laughs> – uh, yeah. on the board, then I will take Stephon Diggs. All right, I'll take Jonathan Taylor then. Um, rotate back to a running back. Two picks left in the second round. Uh, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods also haven't really been mentioned. Don't know if those are too early. Amari Cooper, who's yeah. been dominant but has a quarterback change. Yeah, that's the problem. How Odell Beckham. Fall? I mean, Beckham uh, could be in consideration here. Mike Evans. There's Yeah, Mike, wow, Mike Evans. Kenny Galladay. What did, Mike Evans. How – Disrespectful are we to him right now? Is, is is he leading the league in touchdowns? He's got to be Probably at least tied. Close. Uh, and uh, this this is a heading back to the original draft board and just 
sticking with the guy because it hasn't happened so far, except for one week uh, because he suffered an injury. But I would take George Kittle here. I think George Kittle will return to dominance and be the number two guy, number two tight end, an actual difference maker at the position. I, just I like, like the pick. I like yeah, the I, I like that pick a lot. And then I'll, I'll take Stephon Diggs because I made a promise to a close <laughs> friend you. of mine. <laughs> Stephon Diggs has been unbelievable in terms of the targets, the the role he plays in that offense. 16 targets last night, I believe. Yeah, yeah. and and he's the go-to guy. And Is Josh that, Allen Seriously? Is, yeah. He hit 16? Yeah. Wow. I mean, um, for what it's worth, last year, okay, Stephon Diggs last year had 94 total targets. Through five games, he has 51 targets. Holy yeah, crap, baby. man. So, yeah, baby. Uh, he is a great player, and Josh Allen has made such tremendous strides as a passer. The 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 improvement in Josh Allen's accuracy is something that I I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here, but I don't think I've ever seen a player improve the way that I've that that Josh Allen has this year. Accuracy is one of those things that it can get a little bit better when you make the jump from college to the NFL. A little the the pros you come always in, go up a couple points they, as you they, come in. They clean up your mechanics, but. It looked like it. It looked like Josh Allen was going to be able to win games in the NFL, but it was not going to be a huge jump. It, we, we knew who he was as a passer, like, but his, his when he's rolling out, he's throwing across his body and throws that usually would have sailed or been spiked in the dirt. He is he's hitting guys. I, I mean, I yeah. To add to that, I cannot believe, and it's like a hat tip to Josh Allen who is. He is just blown away. All expectations I have had for him as a player, it's incredible. It's He was one of those players that he would throw an accurate pass, throw an accurate pass, and then be so wildly right. inaccurate. It was a consistency issue. And that's the type of player I never see make that jump. Those people right. who show flashes but are so inconsistent – then you know, and so kudos. It's been great. My Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs stack is yep. very happy right now. Diggs is on pace for 163 targets. Well, uh, just to put some stats behind the praise of Josh Allen, he's jumped uh, year to year, 59 percent. He went 53, 59 last year, jumped to 69 percent passer this year with a yards per attempt jump of 6.7 up to 8.4. <laughs> so the accuracy's jumped 10 percent. Yet the yards per attempt have gone up, so he's taking more downfield shots. That's amazing. He's uh, and and a lot of this, you know, credit to Josh Allen, credit to Stephon Diggs, credit to the coaching staff, credit yeah. to the offensive line giving him the ability to stand there. I mean, I was just so impressed with them last night. It really came down to turnovers. This game would have been very close. Agreed. Very very close. So, all right, that does it for our fantasy draft redo. Uh, Judge Giamatti, uh, any yeah. glaring omissions from that list? Anything you were just kind of you know, discouraged by our decisions with? No, that I don't think so. Sentence. No. Yeah, I mean, the names that, you know, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, surprised, you know, that they're not in those top two rounds. But would you really take Julio over Stephon Diggs right now in a draft? No, I wouldn't. No, I would not. Yeah, that's, I mean, interesting. And, and I uh, didn't. Now, let me ask you this. We're not <laughs> drafting through the third round. And I didn't. But does a quarterback belong in the third round? No. no. There are so many great players here. I mean, a whole tier of wide receivers that, you know, are are huge difference makers. Uh, you know, A.J. Brown, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Robbie Anderson, Odell Beckham, uh, Terry McLaurin. There's there are so Keenan Allen, even if I am Mike Evans, even if I imbued Russ and and Mahomes with the exact stats they have now for the remainder of the year. Well, no. No, I mean, if you guaranteed me that what Russ has done will not stop he for the rest of the year, then, then, yes, then you yeah, would. you would take that. But the reality is, I mean, if you look at what Russ did the beginning of last season was unfathomable, and people were, you know, I was dancing on Mike's grave because I was pro-Russ, and he was... Which is kind of rude, but... He, well, right, because, you know, it's like he was still alive, but I was... <laughs> you forced I, him in there. Yeah. I got you with the zombie hand, though. That's true. And I didn't fully get out of the grave, but I, I zombie-handed. But yeah. Mahomes, we've seen it for years and years, and he's sitting here doing what he's he's done. Well, he's not doing what he got famous for in the 50-plus touchdown season where he... 
scorched the earth. He is. He's, he's, he's having a great year. He is having a great multiple year. number one finishes. Yeah, but I I don't think he is having you know the year we saw what was that twenty eighteen, I th- I think it was twenty eighteen where yeah. he was he was a gargantuan difference maker. I mean the difference last he's, year he's between on pace Lamar forty two. The difference last year between Lamar Jackson and the number two was humongous. The difference a year prior between Pat Mahomes and the number two was humongous. The difference this year between Pat Mahomes and Russell Wilson or Josh Allen or those guys is it's not it's not really J D. But it's deal. predictability, right? Sure. It, With a player like Mahomes who's done it multiple years. I'm just bringing it up because I think he belongs in the late third as the first quarterback off the board. Above an Allen, above a Russell he Wilson. He would certainly be my first quarterback, yes. You watched through a lot of Hollywood Brown tape the other day. I, I, I noticed. And do you have any takeaways from that film study on what's going on with Lamar Jackson? He's not playing well as a passer. Well, I mean, uh, the, the reality is you want to talk about accuracy and consistency. That's he, what I mean. Like, is, it, is it a team problem or is this – does it look like this is just a Lamar Jackson problem? Yeah, right I now. think it's one hundred percent a Lamar Jackson problem. Overthrowing him, underthrowing him. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't even consistent in in how he was missing him. Um, the the targets are there, the air yards are there, but the completions aren't there because. But let, let me tell you the stats behind that because I, I when we were looking at the Josh Allen numbers, I looked up the Lamar Jackson numbers because I was expecting to be able to say, "Here's what Josh Allen did, and here's the step back that Lamar Jackson's taken." It's not there in the stats. He was a 66% passer last year. He's a 64% passer this year. His yards per attempt have not changed. So the numbers, maybe the volume has changed to support to support those. Obviously, if you pass for 300 yards at 64% versus passing for 150 yards at 64%, the production is a lot different for the wide receivers. But I expected to see a statistical backup of what we've seen on the field with the bad decisions or with air mailing his players, and I didn't see that. I will say the last three weeks, Lamar Jackson is completing 56% of his passes. So it's been worse of late. Yes. Okay. Uh, like his, his, The reason he's at 64% is he had the the two great games. All right, it, that it, adds it, up then. Yeah. So, it, I, don't, yeah, man, I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. I mean, I will say this. He's rolling out. He's making the right read. I mean, I, I watched, I watched, you know, all the Hollywood, and he's finding him when he should. He's just not hitting him. So I think it's entirely on Lamar Jackson, which, you know, he, if he if he corrects that and just starts hitting his guys, I, I think the offense will be clicking. They're still winning. They're still oh, yeah. winning games. Sure. Um, that defense is. Yeah, so def- good. the defense is great. the uh, The running game hasn't been as good as last year. Uh, Mark Andrews has been great. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, higher value. You know he's going to go to him around the goal line. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. A reminder, we have the footcast tonight, or this afternoon, I suppose, uh, which you can find at jointhefoot.com, our bonus weekly episode, along with all the premium resources and a way to support the show at jointhefoot.com. We will get into the starts of the week tomorrow and the matchups and... It's going to be a good time, guys. It's going to be a great time. Great news, everybody. I have added Austin Hooper. I will not be playing Zach Ertz. Wow. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. you Breakout week for Ertz coming. (laughs) Goodbye. Don't do that. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, with Simply Safe Home Security, you can protect your whole home around the clock. It's serious, lasting protection, and all it takes is a simple 30 minute setup. You'll even get a free security camera when you protect your home today. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers and get a free security camera plus a 60 day risk free trial with any new system order. There's nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.